Grace, peace, and eternal faith to you as we journey as pilgrims this side of heaven together. Redeemed by the life, the love, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, let us proclaim. Amen. So we continue in uh, today in the gift season, giving in faith together. That's what that means and stands for, G-I-F-T, giving in faith together. This is our, again, 2023 a Take on Commitment Sunday, a time where we prayerfully consider our blessings and commit anew, commit afresh to how they overflow back out into the world. Because as we've heard in the last couple of weeks, we hear it again from 2 Corinthians, you must decide, says scripture, in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need. And we will do this for two more Sundays. And our emphases over the next two Sundays will be sacrifice and then thanksgiving. Last week, we sat with how tradition calls us to live and to give. And we donned red. Lenny, Miss Lenny and Bill have been very busy. Every week, there's a new color up front. That's the season we're in. We donned Reformation red and celebrated that God is always making things new. Therefore, we as God's people are called to hold things open-handedly and to be open to reform. And our lesson from last week, last Sunday, was love God and love neighbor. And that helped us highlight that what is our founding and grounding tradition of all traditions, we stand on the ground of love. That is our grounding tradition. So as a bridge for uh, our emphasis for today, which is legacy, I want to tie last week's love to its natural partner. I think love is most fully expressed when we are in relationship. I found this quote that summarizes this pairing well. It says, love God, love neighbor, and love self. Jesus is really into relationships. Oftentimes, even if unintentionally, we put loving self first. In the end, if we do this, this means we have less love to give neighbor and even less for God. Jesus puts relationship with God first. And he doesn't do this to make us last but so that we can fully understand love and relationship the way God desires it for us. God knows the importance of love in relationship, and God knows our faults and our failings, so if we can love God first, love neighbor, love self, that is what God wants for us. Love is best understood in right relationship, in connection, in giving, in receiving, and done eternally. And so this brings us to today in our lens of legacy. Today, All Saints Sunday, where we honor the saints, thinking mostly of those who have gone home before us, home, capital H, home, heaven, those we've lo loved and lost. And in just a bit, we will pray, remembering those deceased through saying their names, uh, tolling a bell, and candle lighting. It is a time and an invitation for us to support one another in a quiet time and in reflection. And as we recall those named, we most likely also call to mind with a smile or a tear the relationships that we had with them. The relationships that perhaps were good and or both challenging. Lives lost affect us because their presence in our lives leave an impact even when they're gone. They leave a legacy. So love and relationship leave an impression that then shows up in how we live, an impression in how we love, an impression on how we give. In our gospel lesson from today, we finally, we were talking about this in uh, Sunday school, we were finally beyond We've had six weeks of Jesus fighting and arguing with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, so we're finally over that hump. He's finally not fighting with them, but he's still calling them to task. Instead, Jesus today is speaking to the crowds and to the disciples and, of course, to us and says, practice what you preach. Share and bear burdens. Be humble. Be a lifelong student and serve. 
And if we want to put it into a little proverb, maybe that you could, uh, we could do it for uh, our bazaar coming up. Practice and share humble learning service. Practice and share humble learning service. We are called to the tradition of love, and today we are given the gift and the wisdom of legacy. So likely those you call to mind with tears and with longing and deep sadness left an impression of love, of humility, of generosity, and of service. As a pastor, when I ask after other people's journeys of faith, when we sit down and have a conversation and I say, so how did you come to faith? What is your story? Who was a part of your life that maybe uh, said, let's do this together? Or when the lives of dear ones are shared as it was yesterday. Ricky, we heard legacy a lot in what, in what Carrie shared yesterday. Uh, those, uh, when we're pulling this stuff together, uh, these are the aspects of life that are shared, that stay with us, that inform our life and our future. Very often, in those lives that are well-lived, we hear this statement, I pray to live a life such as, insert name here, I pray to live a life such as Gail. I pray to live a life such as Sharon. I pray to live a life such as Ray. One of my favorite saint stories to tell is yet again about my father-in-law. I kind of threw him under the bus a little bit last week. I told the story of uh, him docking boats. And in docking boats, he would get very frantic and run from end to end of the boat, and it was crazy. But my favorite story, favorite, favorite story to tell about my father-in-law also involves my mother-in-law and really, I think, highlights the ripple effect of um, legacy. So he had a red pickup truck, and he passed in 05. And uh, in uh, 06, uh, my young family, my husband Greg, myself, and I think our kids were four and seven, uh, had an opportunity to go on a week of mission to Costa Rica. Well, you can imagine flying to Costa Rica, four people with lodging. Um, it's kind of expensive. And so we were fundraising for the whole year before that. And we had fundraised quite a bit, but we were short. And uh, I think we were about mm, six months out, maybe coming up on uh, when we needed to make our final payments. Well, Mom decided that she was going to sell the red pickup truck. And great, you know, Mom's taking care of business, putting everything in order. Uh, little did we know that she was going to gift to us the money from the sale of that red pickup truck. Guess how much it was? Exactly, exactly what we needed was the difference, the gap between what we needed to go then on that trip. And I swear and will go to my grave that that trip began my journey to then being here in this place as pastor. So that gift, that generosity, that taking care of a thing that then could be sold, that then a generous heart gave into this opportunity for us, it just keeps giving. It wasn't a significant, I mean, it was, a, it was significant to us, but it wasn't a million dollars, I can tell you that. It was not a million dollars. We should never underestimate the power of the lives that we live, the love that we have, and what we have to give. So I will forever tell that story with gratitude and gratefulness because I think it is a testimony to legacy that is still rippling out. It's an example of where God works through our resources in ways that we don't fully know yet. And God, my, my father-in-law didn't get to live to see that. But do you think he's seen it? I think he's seen it. Love is now and love is legacy. We can also get caught by in thinking of negative. Not all our lives intersect in, in joyous ways. Um, there is sometimes negative impact and legacy. And I would say that Jesus kind of addressed that today uh, in our lesson. Jesus points to Moses, that Moses was and is a powerful legacy. Moses was someone from the Old Testament, from our Judeo-Christian roots, a model of faith, one who encountered God and was the leader of a nation. And Jesus highlights and affirms the importance of that foundation 
He said, do whatever is taught. He doesn't say, forget that. He does say, do what was taught. And we can choose not to receive and enact the gift of legacy in this, uh, in making it only about ourselves and not passing it on. And undeniably, there is impact from such living and our lives then intersect with those folks as well. Those folks that lived and died, there's legacy there as well. But Jesus, Jesus points to the greatest legacy, that we have one teacher, one father, one instructor, one guide, one master, and that is God, the Savior, the Messiah, the Christ. So we have had lives that have been impacted and sometimes within the same person, movingly, lovingly, negatively, we have the right and the opportunity and the invitation to say, what am I going to do with this legacy? And I, I assume you would uh, trust that it is to share it in love, that tradition of love. How do I put this tradition, this legacy of love into practice then. We got the tradition, the platform last week. I think today we get some tools of living into that. Repeat it again. Practice what you preach. Share and bear burdens. Be humble. Be a lifelong student and serve. Practice and share humble learning service. Be a legacy. Before you leave a legacy, be a legacy and how God has called you to be. And again, going back to and referencing that 2 Corinthians passage, we heard the end last week, and I invite you to hear it a different way uh, today from the message translation. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. And as one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the winds giving to the, need and the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. Last week I asked you, can we outgive God? No. This most generous God, who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals, is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something that you then can give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Hear that our cups overflow, and we are called and blessed to share in legacies that are unfolding in front of us and into the future. We can give and be a legacy on this side of heaven. And then maybe say, yeah, they're going to tell stories about me. I think that's a good thing. They can be funny. They can be generous. There may be a few negatives. We're not all perfect. Be a legacy today. Leave a legacy for tomorrow because we are truly blessed with the legacy of an abundantly blessing God. Am I right? Amen.